Welcome everyone to this edition of Looking at Louisville. I'm Chaz. Hello, I'm Stacy. And we are here at the Louisville Visitor Center in downtown Louisville, and we're here for a very special reason. That's right, Chaz. In this episode, we are actually going to try to learn a little history, specifically Good. about Louisville's civil rights heritage. Now, Louisville's known as the gateway to the South, correct? Well, that's a very important fact. It once was, I think. Now we call it the gateway to bourbon country. Yes, but yes, Louisville was an important stop on the Underground Railroad back in the day. Now, this driving tour that we're going to do was launched by the University of Louisville's and Braden Center, and it really covers civil rights heritage, mainly focusing on that very important era of the 1960s. Now, we also have a brochure here that you can we pick do. up, We right? do. That's why we're at the Visitor Center to begin our uh, tour. Uh, we're going to use this uh, nice, glossy brochure as our guide. You can also go online and download a Google Maps to it, but we're going to use this brochure, and we're going to use the Muhammad Ali Center as our first stop. Let's go. Let's go. We are here at the Muhammad Ali Center with its president and CEO, Donald Lassier. And Donald, we are at the first stop on uh, the Civil Rights Tour. And I know that Muhammad didn't necessarily fashion himself as a civil rights leader, but certainly his life story, there were some defining moments at a very critical time in the movement. And I think the center does a, a particularly good job with those exhibits. While Muhammad wasn't considered a leader in the civil rights movement, he did inspire a lot of people to participate in the movement. What Muhammad did through being very uh, bodacious and having a great bravado and talking about himself as being the greatest, he inspired a lot of African Americans to believe in themselves. His self-confidence and his self-esteem was an impetus for a lot of African Americans to believe that they could be what they wanted to be. We're sitting here? at the uh, famous lunch counter you know, exhibit so where me. Muhammad came back from the Olympics to Louisville and he wasn't served in a restaurant because of the color of his skin. And that's what we're kind of hearing there. That's what we're hearing here. And the cool thing about this exhibit, the important thing about this exhibit, is it really does set the context for the time and the turbulence of the civil rights era. era. This exhibit also is a um, sort of a testament of Muhammad Ali. It's where he demonstrates where he changes from being Cassius Clay to being Muhammad Ali. It also has his famous quote, I don't have to be what you want me to be. I can be what I want to be. And that sort of resonated with a lot of people in the civil rights movement. And if we go through the exhibit, you can spend about an hour and what you'll see is that the the civil rights era the civil rights movement was multifaceted it had many layers to it and i think that's what this exhibit really demonstrates and that that there were a whole lot of things going on during that era and mohammed was right in the middle of it in a lot of respects We made it here to the University of Louisville and we're with Dr. Kate Fossil and you're here to tell me a little bit about the sculpture behind me in Freedom Park. Could you tell us? Uh, yes, this is uh, just opened this last year, just completed. This is a project that was a long time coming and it's uh, sort of the uh, history of African American progress in Louisville and, and in Kentucky. When you think of the Civil Rights Movement, I think people typically think of Birmingham or Jackson, Mississippi. They don't think of Louisville, but there was a very vibrant mo movement here in Louisville, and there was a lot of racial segregation and discrimination and hierarchy here in Louisville prior to the 1960s and 70s that we think people need to know. Well, 
Stacy, we made it here to Food for Your Soul, and we're going to get educated more. We're going to be talking about soul food. That's right, Chaz. You know, normally we talk about what we've eaten at the, at the restaurant. Uh, today I want to go a little more into the why of we, why we picked this particular restaurant um, and the origin of soul food itself. And who's our special and guest? And we've got a very special guest to do that, the owner and chef, uh, Teresa Turner. And uh, Teresa, we were talking a little off camera about a lot of people have heard the term soul food. Right. I was surprised to learn, though, that it wasn't actually coined until the 1960s during the height of the Civil right. Rights era. Yes. It's something you've obviously grown up with right From and yeah. right right yes. and we were talking about how it goes back much earlier before the coin was turned because of the ingredients that were brought over during the slave trade right. ingredients that you still cook with like yes. I got peas ham hock jaw bacon okra, okra tomatoes and, you know, sorghum, sorghum which is a big thing in Kentucky yes yes yes, right. yes a Creole texture so uh, we put it together and it makes a very good dish when you uh, combine them all together and what's that very special sauce that you have? That was awesome. Yeah, we you have tell us about the recipe yeah, for that. I have a recipe for my sandwiches and for my egg rolls and burgers. It's called a pea, soul food peas salad sauce. And it's made out of black eyed peas. I have five main ingredients I can't tell you about. Top but secret. Top like secret, the yes. Here. Plus it with the mayonnaise. And I can tell you one of the seasonings. You can taste in there very well. You taste Obey. So Obey, is, even though it's Creole, but it's soul food, it's using a lot of jambalayas and different things. And we decided one day we needed something different for our restaurant. So they didn't want the basic cheeseburger. So like, okay, let's put fried green tomato, greens and cabbage, and sauteed onions on a bun. And it worked with a hamburger and our pea sauce. Well, it's been a number one hit down. We'll have to try the burger next time. We did have the sauce on the fried green tomatoes that we had as an appetizer yes. and the cabbage rolls also with the black eyed peas. With the black eyed peas. Then for we did family style, uh, we had the rib tips, yes. delicious, um, almost fall off the bone. Yes. Uh, we had the fried chicken, uh, which is very much like my grandmother. She was proud to say. Uh, cast iron skillet in the yes. pasture. All right. That must be the key ingredient. Yes. And the fried bologna, too. And you can fill your soul downtown here on Fifth Street. So, so for more information about this episode, please go to go to Louisville.com. Of course, you can send us an email podcast to go to Louisville.com. Or you can find us in Facebook, YouTube, and in Twitter. So as always, you're looking at Louisville. See you real soon.